Okay, so I'm gonna do a one hour yoga session today. For those of you who don't know, I am a yoga instructor. The worst yoga instructor you will ever have because I'm gonna be, my mind is gonna be racing the whole time. I'm gonna be chit chatting. I had a terrible sleep last night, so. Hopefully I will exceed your expectations as the best first yoga instructor you'll ever have. So, I'm gonna do some yin yoga while I chat with you guys. <sighs> and complain about my night. So last night, I had a really bad sleep. It was basically a lot of animal sound, like always, but last night. Uh, there was a cat fight right outside of our window, which happens pretty frequently, but this time, it was just like a very sudden noise that jolted both me and Andrew out of bed. And it was not fun. It was hard to fall asleep afterwards. I don't even know if you guys can hear me right now because of the waterfall sound in the background. I'm trying to move my neck around because my neck was actually hurting me the most last night. And I know it's because vagus nerve related. That's, now I know what it is. So my, my neck and my ears have been bothering me the most. Um, but also, I'm just having so many mosquito bites, like all over me. I have so many mosquito bites. That's bothering me too. Like everything just bothers me at the same time. Inflammation, when it happens in one place, it happens in the other. Also. Anyway, I'm just gonna do some stretches. I'm gonna do some pigeon. Don't mind me. I'm gonna do a pigeon pose. I'm gonna relax in this position. Uh, there's a guy working here. They're cutting down the coconuts from the trees. And actually, really delicious coconuts. Green coconuts. They're really yummy. The meat. So good. I'm gonna do uh, Cobra Pigeon Pose. I know it's got another name. Yeah. Guys, cutting wood here, cutting bamboo. So, yeah, that's been my night. Other than that, pretty chill. I'm working on my clothing line. I found a few manufacturers that I'm going to visit next week. But until then, I want to first, like, definitely know what I'm going to be selling, or what I'm going to be making. And, yeah, think about it. Like, I didn't even think I'd be getting into this position because I thought I would be too stressed out to even think about it. But I feel like I'm on, in this transition where I'm starting to just see it unfolding. The vision is sort of like unfolding without me putting too much effort and thought into it. So it's pretty cool actually. Ah. Mm. I'm so sweaty. I'm gonna complain a little bit. But one thing I notice is that whenever I do yoga like this, like stretching and breathing and relaxing into a pose, I am less itchy everywhere. My the things that bother me bother me less. 
and I've been doing this visualization exercise where I think about where it hurts. Like I did this last night for my neck and in my ears. I just imagine where it hurts. I try to visualize visualize it and I try to like be with it. And imagine like going in there as if it's a little crying baby and holding it, hugging it, letting it cry in my arms, telling it that it's doing a really good job of letting me know what the problem is. And just keep doing that until it goes away. And it does actually go away when you do that. Focus on it. You invite all the pain. Because ultimately pain is not the problem. Pain is not the problem. Pain is just letting you know that you have problems. Without the pain, you would have no way to gauge your problems. Unless you were to go and get like a really advanced medical scan, which might not even be as accurate. Um, because pain is when your nerves are working properly. I mean, pain is a sign that they're working. Pain is a sign that you have working nerves. Working signaling is happening in your body. You're able to sense when there's problems. And you should only be so lucky that your body is communicating with you. One thing I noticed is that communication is something that is not valued in a lot of people. And you see it reflected in the way that their bodies are with them. They're, they don't value communicating with other people. They don't value people communicating with them. They don't value communication. And their bodies don't value communicating with them. So, like, communication is a huge gift. How you know when there's problems, how you know what's going on. Sometimes you're just way too overloaded with stress, stressful things to be able to be present for whatever signals you're receiving. So I totally get that. I was certainly in that place. Um, don't laugh at my yoga. But at the end of the day, like, if you get to a point where you're able to focus on the signals that you're receiving from your body, and you're able to like, actually hear the pain and feel it without other distractions. It's kind of like the best place to be because ultimately oh, there's so many bugs here and there's a centipede, right? There was a centipede. Oh, it doesn't crawl on me. It's hard to be relaxed when the centipede's like about to crawl on you. They're close to that. It's kind of ants here huge ants, like biting ants. So, at the end of the day, pain is just a word that we give to like a really strong sensation. Pain is only a spectrum of really strong signals that your body is giving you, you know what I mean? And it doesn't have to be a negative thing, like we have because it's uncomfortable and it's, we're overloaded with it, we gave it the name of pain. Pain hurt, you know, but the body does not see things in positive, negative, the way that we do, the way that our morality does. The body is just seeing, seeing it as communication. It's just communicating. And it doesn't see it as being good communication or bad communication. All communication from your body is good communication. Unless you have ignored your body to the point where you, like, you have destroyed your body and it's not even able to communicate properly. So then it, the communication will be like dysfunctional. But that's only because you have not embraced the communication that you've been receiving from your body. 
before, early enough, if you had properly accepted communication from your body right from the very beginning, it wouldn't be so hard. It wouldn't be so hard for your body to communicate these things with you. You wouldn't be feeling all this pain right now. It wouldn't even be pain. In fact, it wouldn't even be such a big, huge flood of sensations because your body would have been comfortably sending it to you, sending you these signals in a very manageable way. Okay, I don't know where the centipede went, so now it's getting me nervous. Oh, right here. Right here. Go, 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 go. Please, I do not want to crush a centipede in the middle of my yoga. Go. So, yeah. Stretch out my hamstrings a little bit. I'm crushing so many ants right now. It's not even funny. A huge ant. There's a giant spider that I get. There's, it's fun to be around all these animals. It's just like it's cute until it's not. Like so, cats. The cats that were fighting last night. When they're not fighting, they're in heat, and there's a lot of them. And it started off being a really cute thing where, like, a cat gave birth right next to our unit, so right next to our house. I actually filmed it, and I don't know if I showed it to you guys, but maybe I'll show it here. This is so cute. Look, right outside of my kitchen. Right outside of my kitchen. There's a mommy feeding her three little baby kitties. That is so cute. I was wondering where this, these new babies all of a sudden came out of. I saw little baby kitties earlier. Aww. They're so cute. Little babies. That gave birth to like a bunch of little cats. They were so cute little kitties. They were really cute little kitties. And it was really cute the first time. And I filmed them, and then they started growing up, and those kitties became cats. And they started having issues and fighting and being in heat and doing what cats do. And now it's suddenly not cute. And I just want them to go and let me sleep because I'm not able to sleep with them doing this every single night. And then I just got up because I need to check on that centipede and make sure it's not coming near my knee. So there's the cats and then there's the monkeys monkeys are so cute i think they're so adorable but according to the people here they get really annoying and there's a street that we've been looking at because we want to move because we're always wanting to move we're always wanting to upgrade and find a better place so there's a street that we're looking at that's really awesome and it has a lot of monkeys i think the monkeys are cute i'm not bothered by monkeys but the people on the street don't seem to think so they seem to really be really be annoyed by the monkeys Ew. and they even have a monkey police over oh, here let me show you guys maybe if I have this footage I'll stick it in I need to This would be our backyard. <laughs> oh yeah. 
getting the monkeys to leave. It's so funny. That's, that's where the monkeys. Oh, look at how scared they are. He's showing them the slingshot. That is so cool. I'm. They're so scared of the slingshot. Yeah. So they have monkey boys that they like slingshot the monkeys to get away because to get away from the shops and people's homes because they're so annoying. I hope the sound is coming through on this. So yeah. That's what I'm up to. Um, actually, my anxiety is gone. Like, I know you guys hear me complain a lot. I'm complaining about everything. I'm feeling everything so, 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 so loudly. I'm feeling every sensation. And it's like, kind of actually annoying but it's it's okay it's good because this is like my sometimes when you're you know if you're like me if you've been blocking yourself from feeling for so long like i've been having you know drugs and alcohol and i'm not trying to be dramatic like i was literally having every single day Every single day, drinking, getting drunk, not just drinking, every single day to turn off feelings. So, of course, when you're, you've been trying, like, deliberately trying to kill your signaling in your body for so long, like, I've literally, every single day, even when we were in Mexico, I was having gummies every single day. Which is fine, you know, if you have no other choice. To me, I felt like I had no other choice because I would... I was in fight or flight constantly. And I didn't know what to do about it. Um, I was trying, though. I was... Seeds were planted. I was starting... I was going to therapy. I was talking to people. I was starting to do healing stuff. So seeds were planted to get out of it. But I still was using these things to try to turn off the signaling that was happening in my brain. And now that I don't have them, all these sensations are coming back. They're coming to the forefront. And I feel like the bright side of it, which people don't talk about, about, you know, people only talk about the negatives of like drug and alcohol withdrawal. But there's a huge positive, and the positive is that there's no like hidden anxiety. Like there's no hidden, it's all coming to the forefront, for me at least. It feels like it's just like before when I was drinking or, you know, having gummies or painkillers or whatever I was having, uh, steroids for the, for the diarrhea. Like before when I was having these signal killing drugs, um, It was like all the noise was deleted from my vision and put in the in a box in the back room. They're deleted from my sight, but not deleted. They're just deleted from my sight. But they're still there. They're still like like a hanging over my head, kind of, you know, in the back. They're kind of like like a skeleton in the closet. But now. It feels like they're all sort of brought out to the forefront. And they're becoming less and less and less over time. Because really just the circumstances of our life. The circumstances of our life being much, much less stimulation. Much less to deal with, much less stress, uh, less healthier outlook, um, fewer costs, you know, 
I, I don't know, simpler thoughts. So we do, we do actually, we are being a little more extravagant, we're doing more out here. But I think it's just because we're excited about life. So, um, I'm being way more active. I'm spending not nearly as much time in front of a laptop as I used to. The only time I, I spend sitting is like recently, and it, and it does actually stress me out. I don't like, like I've really been not sitting in front of a laptop. I've been just swimming every day. Because when I do, it, it really uh, sets off my anxiety. My neck and ears hurting. And, and my overthinking in general. So, I swim a lot. I've been doing these stretches, which you might call yoga. <laughs> like my flower. The next step. We're gonna get a massage after this. Dance classes, a lot of dance classes. And maybe sometime today I'll get around to recording that audio book because I know that House Hackers Anonymous as an audio book will be a lot easier to listen to. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys are like doing this with me. If you're at home doing stretches while watching this, um, help your uh, enjoying yourself. Maybe I'll put some chill background music to this. There's Right now, my background music is kind of a waterfall. It's like a nice <coughs> waterfall in the background. Maybe I'll do a bridge pose. Do a bridge pose. Um, wait, no. Let's do this one. I forgot what this is called, but this is like a twist. You just twist your legs on top of each other. Maybe we'll do a standing twist later. But like close your eyes. I like to move my body. When you like move your body, you let it sort of be fluid. You're basically tricking your body into thinking that it's safe mode. Because safe body, like when a body is safe, not in fight or flight, it's basically allowed to wiggle around and move around and be fluid and flexible. But a body that's in danger can't do that. A body that's in danger is your muscles are contracted, frozen, you're ready to fight the bear, you're immobilized, or you're ready to like, let's try to escape the situation. So you're not like able to just be relaxed and do like that. So your body won't be able to heal as fast when it's in that hyper aroused, frozen muscle state. You really need to, like, even when I'm doing yoga, like, I try stretching or whatever you want to call this, like, I try to not stretch too deeply or to be too ambitious with it because the goal here is not to be ambitious. The goal is to try to convince your body that you are relaxed and that you're safe and that you're wiggling around. I might not even be doing it all, but try to wiggle around while you're doing it. And breathe deeply, which I'm not doing. But I'm learning. I'm learning from my voice lessons how to breathe deeply. That's really helping. Like if you're yeah, voice lessons, I would highly recommend. Alright.
try and bridge Okay. Let's see how long we can do this. I'm gonna try to do this when I'm having a pop. Oh, there's an ant on my arm. There's an ant falling on my arm. There's an ant falling on my arm. on the bottom of my feet. My beautiful poor little feet that are getting eaten alive. I'm just thinking about just being here because I don't have anywhere else to be. That's the cool thing about the visa, the visa system in Indonesia, which I really love actually, is that the visas here are like, there's, if you're an expat, there's like three likely options for you to live in Indonesia, to be here. You're probably either going to be here on a tourist visa, which is only like one or two months, and then you have to leave, or most people are on the B211 visa, which is what we're on, which filters out. Basically, it's, a, it's an expensive visa. It's about $1,000 a year to get this visa. Oof. And you can't travel on it. Meaning, so you it's six months at a time. You're here six months at a time, but you're not allowed to leave the country or else you lose the visa. So. It basically makes it so that people come here, they stay six months, and they don't leave for six months. It kind of forces you to like be present, be in the moment, because you don't have anywhere else to be. And it makes it feels very stable, actually. It's very stabilized. I feel like I'm not at risk of losing anything because I'm definitely here for at least the next. X amount of months. I really, really, really appreciate that. A lot. Yeah, I really appreciate having that. Because my anxiety is very much survival and safety anxiety. So knowing that I definitely have a place here and I can't leave, so it feels like I'm not even afraid of myself because I'm not afraid. Sometimes it's just the law being a certain way lets you relax and not worry that you're gonna screw it up for yourself. So you have the tourists who come and they leave. And then you have the B211 visa holders who come here and they stay here and they make a home for themselves, they're long term, you know? And then you have the people that want to stay longer than six months and they want to be able to travel on the visa. So they have to get some form of investment visa, a business visa or like a real estate investment visa, and they get to have it two years at a time but they can also extend and so essentially what the government is doing is saying if you're a tourist you can do your tourist thing but leave within a month or two but they're filtering out for they want people to stay that are going to make something of it 
that are gonna make it into a business. They're gonna buy a property. They're gonna like try to. And I guess a lot of countries do this, but. So I just like the environment that it creates here. It creates a very set, like, I don't know, a very stable environment where people that we meet are mostly going to be motivated to, if you're trying to stay here long term, to make something of it. The bugs are going to be like a sort of squat thing. I shouldn't call this yoga, I should just call it stretching. I can't even see my head. Stretching or Pilates. I don't know what it's called. I'm bending to one side. I'm not bending to the other side. Yeah. Oh, there's a holiday today. I forget what the name of the holiday is called. Pustic, I think. Pustic. The name of the holiday, the Hindu holiday. So they had like carnivals and stuff yesterday. My hamstrings so tight. Thirty minutes left of our one hour yoga. I think I just want to like wait out here. Then sort of loosely following me. I don't really feel up to anything that's going on in the world, in the states, and. Globe. I know that there's a lot of political tensions everywhere, and unlike the past, where it was just like, you know, in, in the States at least, people were mostly apolitical, and it was just like a small group of people that like were politically involved and they just sort of did their thing. Um, I think the United States has gotten very political, which for other countries is normal. Like, it's very normal in other countries to be political and for political tensions to be really strong and like people killing their opponents and stuff. But in the States, I don't think that's been the case so much. In the past, so um, makes me really glad that I'm not there because I feel like literally um, I would not. It would just be a matter of time before I would get eaten alive, you know, because I just have so many like I, I, there's. Uh, like it would be really hard to say what is part of this, like what's her political affiliation because I, you know, I have worked for people in the past so you could say, oh, that's part of some political affiliation and I have 
certain opinions, thoughts, ideas, but like it's never going to fit exactly within people's expectations within everybody's expectations. Like I'm always going to feel like an outlier in some form. So I just feel like I don't really feel like I have a stake, if that makes sense. Like, I just, I also think that it's silly to think that any of this will resolve itself. But people get so into politics thinking that one group or political party, like, I, I really feel like I agree with the nomad capitalist. He's a hundred percent in nomad capitalist. He has the best mindset, which is like, it, it is really silly to believe that any single person, like the direction of a country, is going to go in the direction that it goes. Outside of who you elect president or politician or official or this or that, you know, people say, oh. But Trump is going to do things that are good for, I don't know, businesses. Or Biden is going to do things that are good for foreign policy. I mean, those are the only two people that I know that are running for president, so... Um, I'm sure there's other people, too, that people are talking about. But it's not how it works in the long term because in the long term it doesn't matter who is doing what it, it matters that the country as a whole is going to go in a certain direction no matter who the president is the president is just being elected for a job the job is for them to do what is going to be done and like they're not going to change they're going to enter office, they're going to fall into their role in a certain dynamic. When you're applying for a job, you might go in there thinking that you're going to change a company, you're going to get into a relationship, change a person, but you're, you're not going to change all of the power dynamics that are at play. You're not going to change your most likely what's going to happen, is that you're going to play within the dynamics that are already existing. And that's for every system that has ever existed in history. One person doesn't enter a system and topple it from the inside. You could do it from the outside, you do it from a position of leverage, but you don't do it as one person that gets a job. That's just the way I see it. And I don't think that the, you know, the U.S. is going in a certain direction, which is fine. You might see it as a good, or that doesn't matter, you know, doesn't matter to me. I respect your thoughts and feelings. Um, if you're happy, then that makes me really happy, actually. Um, I just felt like, I just didn't see a future for myself. And it doesn't matter to me what person is or what, like, I don't know. I don't think that it's anytime soon going to be different, like, because. Oh, like, well, you know, Biden's going to make it so much more chill and less, there's going to be less controversy because Biden is chill guy or like, you know, Trump is going to come in and he's going to make it better. Whatever people say, like, I think that people are just way too optimistic about, like, the power of any of these people to change the inevitable direction of the U.S. and how I, I don't think that I don't 
Yeah. So why am I talking about politics? Oh yeah, because I didn't have a lot of sleep left. Like even the even being gravitating towards wanting to talk about politics or crisis is very much the part of your brain that's in fight or flight. It's naturally gonna talk about things that are not good for your body, that are crisis, danger mode, that signals danger mode to your body. So, that's a good gauge to where my body is at. But, overall, I'm inclined to want to talk about crisis stuff less and less. Like last year, I was writing my book, How Sex is Anonymous, and it was very much like a thinking book. It was like strategy thinking, and my body was much more in a heightened sense of arousal because I was sitting at a desk and thinking all day. Very different than now. So, one exercise that I learned from this book, Vegas Notebook, is um, put your hands behind your head like this and you start using the power of your eye movement. So, you just like look to the right, all the way, look to the left, look to the center, look to the left, all the way, look to the center. Now I'm going to roll my eyes slowly around my head, roll it around, and push your head back on your fingers like so. Look to the center, look up like a clock, look back to the center, look at the Number two hand, look back to the center, look back, look at number three o'clock, look to the center, look at four o'clock, look to the center, look at five o'clock, look to the center, look at six o'clock, the center, seven o'clock. Center, eight o'clock, center, nine o'clock, center, ten o'clock, center, eleven o'clock, center, center. Did I say ten o'clock? <laughs> I feel like I'm already getting relaxed from doing this. It is actually relaxing. If it's not making you relax, you're probably not doing it. You should do it. And another thing that I learned in that book for healing your vagus nerve, obviously moving your neck around softly wiggling around like that. A wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I'm gonna, gonna look to the right and then and sitting straight, look to the right. Then take your left ear and stick it to your left shoulder. So I'm looking to the right and looking to the left. I'm looking to the right and my ear is stuck attracted to my left shoulder. So I'm just going to do this for a little bit. And... If you're yawning, that's really good. That's a really good sign. Go on their side if you feel like it. Now we're going to go to the center. Mm. 
pull it to the left. I'm going to take my right ear, push it to my right shoulder. I think it's still working. I think I might call you a I love wearing this because it's so much fun. So it's much easier to sell things that I'll be wearing anyway. Because I don't have to keep changing, you know, easier to sell things that you already wear. You're filming yourself anyway. And also just going around, getting your picture taken. So I just love wearing yoga clothes and I just like that comfy dress. Uh, so now we're going to do the opposite where we look to the left and take the left ear and stick it to the left shoulder. So I'm looking opposite as what I did before. This is on the Vegas mode. To remove it from its fight or flight state. I, feel, I do feel really relaxed. But I don't know. It's just me, placebo effect or whatever. It's supposed to work scientifically. Because you're pulling you're like releasing tension in the nerves that connect from your eyes, the cranial nerves that connect from your eyes to your uh, vagus, you know, to your neck nerves. We didn't even do all the vinyasa down dog stuff. Alright, we're going to look to the center. Now we're going to look to the right. And we're going to look down. Right here to the right. Beyond. 
You just move around like this. Hmm. One thing that I've noticed as I feel a lot calmer is that I just have so much less to talk about. I don't feel like talking about as much. It's just less on my mind. I feel more in my body, you know? I really don't have a lot more to talk about. I feel very relaxed. I feel okay with that. The only things that I think about is stuff that's happening in my body. So, whereas the average person that's more stuck in their mind, their body pains at this point, or even just me a year ago, body pains might be like a nuisance, like a side thing. They're just on the side, it's just bothering their body. For me, those things are now at the forefront. They're like the main thing that I would notice. It would be the loudest noise in the room is whatever pain is happening in my body, whatever mosquito bite I have, whatever is going on here. I so, feel very relaxed. into the waterfall. I'm going like there. I'm going to make it around. Five, five. I'm mostly going to focus on my baby function because that's what I've been struggling with. What I care about working on. So in the book, it talks about if one side of your head is more flat than the other side, like a red flag. And the same side that I've been having issues with is more flat than the other side. And it's very visibly flat, like the box. In fact, it's a little bit alarming. Like, 
of how flat it is on this side. So now it's making me Yeah, I'm just thinking about it. Just what to do. Maybe I'll see if there's an exercise for that part that I can play with on. <sighs> I'm yawning. That's a really good sign. I came in here bursting wired. Right now I'm yawning. My mosquito bites are not bothering me anymore. That's a really good sign. You know, all these problems, stuff in my head, the mosquito bites, and like, all these things are legit. You know, they're legit signals coming into my body. And they're coming, you know, not delusional. But they're coming from a real place. But how crazy and irritating and loud it is. is gonna, you know, if I'm in a more stressed state, it's just everything is, all the noises are gonna sound a lot louder than they actually are, or that they need to be, I should say. So these exercises for me, doing these exercises and stretches, it helps me process everything from a position of feeling calm and safe, and not being in my fight or flight, because when I make decisions and process information from a position of safety instead of my fight or flight, it creates, further creates results that are derived from safety. Results that come from feeling safe rather like so. You know, when you make decisions from a position of your body being in your fight or flight, not feeling very safe, you're going to create the kind of decisions and future for yourself that create, that continue that fight flight cycle for your, for your life, that continue, continues to send you down a path of things that will further trigger you. I hope I'm like saying it well enough. <sighs> so for me, my goal is, you know, not to give myself a lobotomy or to kill my brain, but the contrary. To relax my brain so much that I'm able to think more clearly and make decisions that will further send me into a, a cycle of being able to relax rather than a cycle of less safety and more chaos. When you're in a hyper aroused state, your, your mind is thinking fight, fight, it's going to make decisions that put you in more fight flight situations. All right. There's an ant on my foot. I'm gonna go head over to my massage. And hope that you guys are having an awesome day. Oh, it's a beautiful pigeon out. A beautiful pigeon. It's a really nice pigeon. You go get a, a video of it real quick. And 
after I'm fudge, I'm going to maybe eat something and go to my modeling class. And then I'm going to sit and write designs for my fashion 